week 14 is hopping up. Well, li literally it's hopping up. The weather is, is hopping up because it's summer. But week 14, a new feature, basically how to plan your paints that you have on your table. I was going to say on your palette, but no. What paints do you need to keep on your table? And four images. Four. Those little bad boys. Whoosh. Up the show. So yes. Week 14. Feels like a long time. And it's not been a long time. It's been a week. Feels like. For some reason these weeks are going slowly. I don't know if that's true or not. But we have fantastic things coming up. Actually, I, I will say, I, some weeks tend to just have, you know, maybe something new that I've not seen, and it seems to come at all at once. Uh, and that's what this week feels like. It feels like a, a good week, a fresh week, um, an exciting week. Obviously, shout out to our sponsor, Broken Toad. And then these logos are obviously... It's funny, actually, that I've got these logos, but I don't have the Hutba show on there. There's no defining... Mm. Uh, there you go. That's, that's what we want. That makes me feel better. Admittedly, it feels a little bit more boring. It's just plain white. Um, and I did that kind of ironically. And now I realize that's wasted on me. Never do anything with, with ironic tensions because um, you have to live with it. And the irony soon soon wears out. Um, hence the intro. Um, it's actually people don't, they, they laugh and they think it's, well, I've been told it's good. But the intention was always to, to take the piss out of um, <laughs> all the serious intros that they have. Uh, and now look at me. I, all I do is talk on a, on a fucking video about things that I've seen. There's no irony in that at all. It's actually just, I think the unboxings are my real, you know, they're, 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 I, I feel like I can't be sarcastic here because it's people's work. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not saying my unboxings are sarcastic. They're my real stream of thought. Um, maybe maybe this week we could do, you know, I'll flip it around and I'll do... No, it was really hard because, look, all right, let's jump in. Okay. And you hear you, I'll be like, right, Ben Layton, Merlin, brilliant. Uh, so here we have, and this is me trying to do an unboxing of a model that's already painted. So sorry, Ben. Um, yeah, so you've got a bloke in a field. It looks like a burnt out field. He's holding an owl for some reason. Um, I don't know why you would hold an owl. I guess it's a companion, which then it gets a bit weird. But then I assume he's got some magic and he's got an affinity with animals. But then why does he have a wolf around his neck that he's killed? Maybe it was an old friend that died uh, and now he's just paying homage, saying, you know, you kept me warm in life um, and now you're keeping me warm in death. You kept my soul warm in life and now you're keeping my body warm in, in death. And sorry, my wife came in slightly friendly. Um, yeah, and what's he doing in the wood at night? You know near a fire there's lots of questions here that make uh, absolutely no sense in my opinion also i don't think that weapon's going to do much it's like a wicker basket chopped off at the top cut in half that's the one in the right hand um he has some skulls on his belt now is that for intimidation or are they people he lost because he wasn't a very good wizard um yeah it's 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 a tough one it's a tough one also it's a bloody big owl or he's a very small person but then, you know, mm, they probably are big owls. And I just don't know about them. But that's not why we came there. But that is probably where my brain goes when I look at pieces. For real. Uh, this was actually included because I felt like it was a very nice um, <laughs> paint job. Uh, tell me which one you prefer. The paint job review or... Jamie looks at models in his own Jamie way. Um, but yeah, I do like the paint job a lot. The old cheeky OSL is always um, a fan favorite and I think it's well done. Also I think it's quite hard to paint um, a nighttime scene. I think it is, uh, at least the way I've done it and probably even harder to do OSL on top of it. Um, but yeah, the models, big child. Started to try and include the models for you guys. Um, now I just feel like people want to know where the models are from. Um, yeah, and this is the daytime, nighttime. Obviously, the photo is not dark. Uh, it gives you a bit more of a feeling. Um, yeah, I find it models like this quite interesting. 
uh, as, as a model for me as a painter to paint, um, mostly because there's a lot of skin and a lot of, I like, I mean, I quite enjoy playing cloth, but um, skin also just realized the eyes of the owl are bright yellow, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, the skin, obviously this skin, technically I could paint better than I do when I try and paint skin with, you know, pinks, basically, or browns. <clears throat> Um, it's definitely a well painted ambiatic. I was going to say ambiance. I don't know what the word would be, but it's definitely a nice piece. <laughs> uh, it really is. I like it a lot, and I like the base and I like the backdrop as well. I always think that adds to a model a lot. So, thank you, Ben. Is it? Is this the second time we've had Ben on the show? I said Ben on the show. Obviously, I'm talking about Ben. It's featured models. I suppose I could look that up. At some point, do some sort of statistics. Um, so, this is actually the model I wanted to start with. Uh, I don't know, people have probably seen this already. Um, Ruben Martinez and Jamie de Garcia. De Garcia. It's Jamie. It's Jamie and Ruben um, from Big Child Creators. Now, these models are back in stock. I'm actually not sure how long ago these were painted, but fuck yeah now. If you've seen them before, fuck it now. If you haven't seen them before, fuck it yeah, now. Um, they're really, really nice. Um, yeah, clearly. I mean, there's a lot going on. The the you know the non-metallic metal is amazing, especially on a. I think this must be seventy-five millimeters of scale. Especially on, a, I don't know. For some reason, I, I imagine it's harder on a bigger scale. I'm not sure if that's true because I've done so little N and M myself, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. If I was doing a Jamie review, I'd probably be confused as why they're all standing on rocks, um, looking down at, at whatever it is. I, I assume they're actually just herding sheep, and they've taken this aggressive stance um, to to herd the sheep. But I suppose you can't underestimate them. Uh, if you look up the statistics on the amount of people that die from sheep trampling or cow trampling, it's startlingly high. I think it's more people get killed by cows and sheep than they do by sharks, which makes sense because sharks don't really like eating people. In fact, they don't like eating people so much that they take a bite and they go, oh, sorry, mate, and then they swim off. They never finish the job. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it had to be included because of how good a paint job and a feel it has to the whole piece. Oops, it's gone too far. Um, but yeah, these models are available. I'm assuming it's three separate models. Um, yeah, I think it must be, right? Not conversions. It would be really weird to do a box up full of conversions rather than just alternative heads. Um, but the reason why I kind of hesitate is because there is a slight similarity between them. But obviously you can see the paint job for yourselves and Ruben and Jamie. God, I've only got three. Keep doing it. Um, I've done a great job. Thank you, Ruben. And thank you, Jamie. And thank you, the sculptor, whoever you were, who did Sparta at War. Sweet. Uh, now we come to hmm. Carla Casas. Yes, Casillas. Casas. Casas. Um, and this is the the Salavas bust <laughs> from Beyond Miniatures. Um, and it was inspired by Frank Miller's illustrations, which obviously I think Sin City was either to, was a comic based on on Frank Miller's or inspired by. I think it was just based on them. And um, well, I mean, every now and then, like a piece comes out that you've never seen anything like it before, and this for me was one of those pieces. Um, like it works on so many levels. For, you know, if I was doing the J review, it would obviously be a bloke's walking down on the street. Uh, someone finds a spotlight in his eyes and then someone else comes up and shoves a finger up his ass. Uh, and he is more annoyed about the light in his eyes than the finger in his ass, but the finger in his ass causes him enough frustration uh, that he's screaming. Um, but I think uh, that's not the case uh, and not what happened, but we will never know. And that's the beauty of art, in my opinion. Uh, from an artistic point of view, I think... It's not easy to do, like, at all. In fact, I'd say it's very, very difficult to do, um, to to interpret volumes so cleanly and crisply and make that black so bloody black. And the white is bloody white as well. Um, and then, obviously, you've got the greys 
in the shadows. So there's a lot of things that I admire about this bust. Um, and it's, it's mostly like the volume interpretations and the high contrast, which I tell you, trying to do, it's seriously good. So Carly, you have my utmost respect. Uh, and the model is obviously beyond miniatures, which is showing the, um, what I was going to say, the power, no, but the, the versatility of the piece that is offering to all the painters. Um, I'd love to see this actually in person. Uh, to see how powerful it is in in daylight without the black background, um, because obviously this is presented as a as art with the black background. I'm talking about the not on the model, uh, so I would be super curious to see. Look at that! I didn't even, I haven't seen that before. It's got that that rim lighting of the white. Oh yeah, no finger up butts though. <laughs> um, and the final of the four, Alfonso Geraldez with the Capricorn which I oddly thought was a star sign for people. Is that right, horoscope? Um, I didn't realize he was physical manifestation of something, unless Scale have written that character themselves. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but the thing that caught my attention, uh, particularly was the cloth. Uh, I very, very much like the, um, the cloak. I think mostly because I, I've never thought to attempt it or it's just a powerful feeling that I get from it uh, and it, yeah I really like it you've also got the hell are they called see that shadow on my eye protection shadow painted in from the bikes which is always a nice effect to be honest with you um, yeah I guess the fact that the contrast there from the, the cloth is so extreme compared to everything else is is genuinely what made me think <laughs> um, yeah. Otherwise, uh, reading the blurb with the Jamie review, it's a bloke sitting on a chair with a whole load of skulls, but apparently he brought life to earth, which is very conflicting and very confusing. Um, mostly because those two things, maybe life is death. And uh, actually, there's no difference if you're a god. Um, <laughs> and then obviously the chair is very nice as well. Um, can't see the base image I put up. But this is the only image I've got of this. Um, so I don't have any other angles. But again, very much enjoy it. And it's, it's I'm glad it's it's made its way into my um den of four, as they say. Um so look at that nice Jamie up below there. Oh she's back. So now we get to the subject which I believe I'm gonna explain in the video. So maybe I don't need to tell you here. Yeah, I totally do. So here we go. So a little jump over to the painting desk and it's a thing that I didn't think uh, or was in no way planned, but it hit me. Um, I don't know how to pick paints. Um, and by that, I mean, I literally don't know what paints to have on my um, painting table. Basically, I've got a lot of paints. This is like the box of all the Games Workshop paints, which is like an 84 litre tub, right? It's massive and it's full. And it's full of new uh, Citadel paints, which I basically hate, which is only on principle because I like the 1999 versions. Bit of a weird one. Um, but, the, you know, so one side of that's full, and then this side is full of, um, the, yeah, the 99 paints that I so enjoy. Um, but then I've got, you know, all the new paints, um, AK's new paints, or um, Chimera, um, you know, the old paints, the originals before the 99 versions from Citadel. Um, they look more like that. You know, the hexagon pots, um, coat de arms, um, model color, oh, that's Vallejo. Vallejo, it's all Vallejo, model color. Um, yeah, I've got the Air from Vallejo, I've got P3. Um, and then, you know, you've got all the artists, for example, the heavy bodies, this weird one, um, golden, blah, 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 army painter. So I've got basically all these paints and that's because I went through that spending addiction that meant I had to spend as much as, as humanly possible on anything. And paints were the thing, but also it was another good excuse to not paint 
Um, so I'd buy things and thus avoid having to pay because I'd be like, well, I need this before I pay. Anyway, now I'm at the point of, of I'm overwhelmed by everything. So I, I basically I cut back everything. And, um, and here we are. Now, I've separated them into kind of sections. And um, all the heavy bodies are going to stay because they live in a drawer nice. All the inks are going to live in the drawer. That's also nice. You can't see that from there. But the ink drawer is full. I had the same problem with inks as I did with paints. So Chimera are there now. They're on my, they're on my desk. Right, fine. Now, I think the new AKs deserve to live there. However, I've actually only used one paint. And this is Light Flesh from this bundle that I have. And I've got a few more there that I'm waiting to do an unboxing for. <laughs> point is I'm not sure yet but this is my theory this is what I think I'll tell you if it's worked for me uh, I'm keeping all the chimeras because they're fantastic I'm going to um, take all of these AKs away except for the one that I use the uh, model color for Leho I'm going to use the black and whites because I really like their black and probably their I think it's called ivory I'm going to keep the rest I'll get rid of um, and I'm going to keep these browns because I now said they're good from um, Vallejo Model Air and then the rest I'm going to get rid of um, including the old schools except for Blood Red, Ultramarine, um, Snakebite Leather, uh, Red Gore and the Foundation Red. The rest I honestly can get you know I can live without so it means they're going, you're staying, you're staying you're going and bear in mind this is I've already got rid of like a, a lot all of you are going so the base yellow I will keep the base black I will keep you can go you can go these are air brush by forge world which I have a huge collection also I've got all the scale 75 and I'll keep um, burnt umber I don't like I'll keep mahogany so these are the paints I'm gonna keep so we've basically gone from like five rows of paints, I don't know how many, to these Chimera. I might even be able to fit them onto one tray. The idea though is paint with these, start with these. If I need a new color, then I come back and pick it out, which means I definitely use it. Um, and that's basically how I want to work. I want to, I want to minimize as much as possible and have my desk as free as possible so I can focus on the task at hand, which previously has been like avoiding painting as much as humanly possible. So that is how I'm picking my paints, kind of. So here we have the, these are all the paints I had on my desk, minus the black flip lids. I only had about four of them from Games Workshop. Um, oh, okay. And uh, the Games Workshop new editions, everything else. I, I did have more paint racks anyway. It, it, it just got to the point where I was just so overwhelmed by everything that I, I don't know, I, I still just always went to like my standard, normal paints, as it were. Uh, just And this is just to give you a reflection on how we got to, obviously I explained in the video. Uh, and then this is where we ended up. Um, and now, honestly, I walked past my work surface and I can't believe how damn clean it is. So, I recommend it actually. It's quite, I don't know, it depends on what kind of person you are, but for me, I found it liberating. I haven't painted yet though. Been too busy this this one. But they are away for a week soon. So week 14 is over. I'll see you on week 15. Tell me what you thought of the newer concept I threw in here. Jamie's view on the models. Uh a little sort of out of the box something. I am gonna mix it up basically each week. I'll look at images, dissect them, you know, as I have done a few weeks, but try and get the people on before because as you've seen, somehow. I uh, don't get people back on the show. So I need to do it before. Uh, yep. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you, guys. Sleep well.